Hello, and welcome to the Auditor of States webinar on the notes to the financial statements that are to be filed under the Hinkle system. I am Michelle Weirs, Assistant Chief Project Manager of the Southeast Region of Local Government Services. And we have Justin Sloan here today also. He is an Assistant Project Manager. He is also from the Southeast Region. This webinar was developed for two purposes, to give guidance to developing the notes to the financial statements to those who were unable to attend our recent trainings throughout the state, and also to give a refresher and future reference points to those that were able to attend our previous trainings. This webinar is intended to help all local governments, including, but not limited to, townships, villages, libraries, land banks, park districts, sewer and water districts, and fire districts. If you were unable to attend our trainings and would like the handouts emailed, please email the address at the end of this slideshow. I will point that out when we get to that slide. The handouts are also available on our website. I will be discussing the basic rules and requirements surrounding the notes and how to get started. Then we will dive into each note. We will be using the township handouts in this webinar and pointing out any differences for villages. Justin will be addressing the regulatory requirements, and I will be addressing the OCBOA requirements. OCBOA is the other comprehensive basis of accounting, also referred to as GAP lookalike. So it is important to know at the onset of this webinar which basis of accounting you will report. I will start now with some frequently asked questions surrounding the new note requirements. When and why are local governments required to prepare notes to the financial statements? Beginning with the year ending December 31st, 2016, local governments must file a full annual financial report including notes. The deadline for filing is 60 days from year end for non-GAAP filers and 150 days for year end GAAP filers. Since our audience today uh, are townships and villages, your requirement is 60 days. And that would be for whether you're reporting regulatory or OCBOA. The next frequently asked question is, uh, the auditors have always prepared the notes in the past. Are they still able to do so? Auditors could still prepare the notes as a non-audit service. However, it is unlikely they will be able to do so by the deadline for most local governments. Therefore, the fiscal officer should prepare and file annual financial reports, including the notes to the financial statements. What is the penalty for not filing notes to the financial statements by the deadline? If notes are not included with the annual financial statements submitted in the Hinkle system, the annual financial report will be considered incomplete and could be subject to non-compliance citations and an unauditable declaration. The notes and the financial statements can be refiled at the time of the audit. However, they will be subject to the same as listed above. If the local government receives a basic audit or an agreed upon procedure, is there still a requirement to file notes to, fi to the financial statements. Yes, although the basic audit report or AUP do not contain notes, local governments are still required to file the notes. If the local government has a two-year audit, 
is there still a requirement to file a report annually? Yes, local governments are still required to file a full annual financial report, including the notes, each year. And this is according to the Auditor State Technical Bulletin 2015-007. The auditors will combine the two years into one audit report. So let's think about this. If your next audit will be for 2016-2017, this year for 2016, you need to re you need to include your notes to the financial statements. In 2017, you need to include your notes to the financial statements. And the auditors will combine those two years together in their audit report. If you filed 2015 without the notes, you are not going to be held to the same standards as you are for 2016. They may ask you to help prepare the notes for 2015 for the two-year audit ending 1516, but you are not held to the standards that we are talking about today. If a local government uses UAN, is there still a requirement to file notes to the financial statements? Yes, UAN entities will be able to meet the filing requirement through the year-end closing process. The, the fiscal officer should prepare notes to the financial statements prior to completing year-end closing procedures. Further information will be, giving, will be given at UAN year-end training and in the year-end closing checklist. Now I'm going to show you some resources that are available and how to get started in preparing your notes. We have shells on our website that I'm going to show you in just a minute. Uh, another resource uh, would be to ask your auditors who compiled your last audit. Most are willing to send you a notes file it would normally be in Word. Um, you could use that as a starting point. You could also look at your prior audit reports that are on the Auditor of State website. What we will be doing today will show you each note and give you tips on how to fill in the notes. Remember to customize every note to your entity. If it does not apply to you, you can delete it just be sure to renumber your notes. So right now I'm going to show how you can look up your prior year audits. This is our website. Go over to audits and come down to search audits. You can type your entity name in. So I'm just going to do this for an example. We're going to say it's a township, your financial audit. Here you can click all fiscal years and all the years that have been released by the Auditor of State will produce here, or you can select a certain year. And then you'll just press search and they'll all um, come up on the screen. Now if you go back up to the website under local government, under reference materials, financial statement shells and footnotes. Here are examples and guides for each entity and reporting type. This first one is for GAP entities. Townships and villages are not required to report under GAP, but if you choose to, there are examples here. You'll select a type. Here are OCBOAs. 
This is what I will be addressing later on. You will select your entity type. We have all kinds here. Here is township, villages. Here are sample statements. And here are the notes. And out to the side, we try to update these every year. And you can see that they were last updated September 2016. So I want to show you uh, the notes for a township really quickly, and then we will exit out of that. This is what you'll see when you click on the sample notes. You should save this to your desktop or to your My Files, wherever. Um, just make sure that you save it each time and save as you go. I would not suggest going all the way to note 23 and then realize you hadn't saved and maybe had taken breaks in between. So save as you go. I normally save my file uh, after each note that I, I complete. And I would save it for each year that you're doing. So uh, give it a name of 2016. Next year, you'll start your notes uh, folder again, and file again, and you'll want to sa save it to 2017. All right. Now I will go back and show you where the regulatory samples are. Here are all the NT types listed, and here are townships, villages financial statements, we have some worksheets, and the worksheets in PDF. Again, they, the notes have been updated in September of 2016, and here are the sample notes. I will open those for townships. Now you'll see I'm just opening today because I'm not saving it. You will want to file, save as, and name it and give it a year. Um, I want to point out a few things in the sample notes. They are color coded. You will see yellow highlights here. This is very helpful guidance. You can read along and it will let you know uh, specific things about each individual note. And then the items that are in green are general information and those are the areas where you, you will need to modify to fit your entity. The notes have a header at the top and you can just click on the header and change the name and county, however you need to be. And then update the year. Didn't do that very well because this is not working. And then click out of it and then you will see that every header throughout the document it has changed. You could also do a find and replace to change all of the years, update the years from 2016 to 2017. Uh, there are X's right now in the samples, so you could find and replace you could um, also, a lot of references in here are CY for current year, PY for prior year. So you could search and replace that way. CY, if you're doing your 2016 notes, CY 2016, PY 2015. Some people do not like to search and replace. They'll search, type in their own year, and then search again to the next um, occurrence that pops up and then manually change it. Because if you do search and replace, 
it will change every CY and that might be in the word agency or something like that. So just be cautious when you're, when you're searching and replacing. Okay, I'm going to turn it over now to Justin. All right, and we are going to get started on note one. Note one is the reporting entity. As you can see on the screen, the reporting entity describes services that your entity, your village, your township provides. Um, if your entity contracts for a major service with another entity, uh, you should describe that as well. For example, uh, the township pays the village for fire and emergency medical services protection. You would want to disclose that in this note. Um, if your entity was in any sort of fiscal distress, you would want to disclose that, whether it be fiscal watch, caution, or emergency. Uh, if it's emergency, you'll need an extra paragraph. Any other organizations that you may be involved with, a uh, brief discussion here. We'll come back to this later when we look at notes 14 through 17. Moving on, you'll see note two. That is your summary of significant accounting policies. Most of this is standard note disclosure language that you will just leave as is from the sample. Uh, one of the first places you'll see is fund types. Go ahead and delete any that don't apply. List the significant funds under each type with a brief description of each one of those funds. As you can see here, you have general fund, special revenue fund. Underneath that, you have the specific types of special revenue fund, road and bridge fund, police fund, fire front fund. Each one of those has their own specific description. The next portion of the significant accounting policies note is your um, budgetary process. Uh, go ahead and update certain sentences if you have encumbrances at year end. In the sample, the yellow highlights will guide you through this process. Moving along, you will see the deposits and investment portion of the note. Um, go ahead and modify this to fit your investments if you have any. We will go into more detail on this topic in note five. Uh, Michelle's gonna jump in and discuss what some ACBOA presentation may be in your su summary of significant accounting policies note. Okay, at this point, I'm going to jump all the way down to page 50 in your handouts if you're an ACBOA filer. And you will see the summary of significant accounting policies has a lot more detail, talking a lot more about the basis of accounting. Also, the cash portion of the note is in a little bit more detail. And there is also this requirement here that will talk about the interest earned in the major fund Normally, it will be your, major, your general fund. It's the fund that receives the majority, the, the significant uh, amounts of your interest. It could be a permanent fund. It's whatever fund is receiving the most. So normally general fund. These shells are set up with links. There's a link here to page 71. If you just click on this, it brings you, and I'm going to have to rotate this page so you can see it. This is a worksheet that will guide you in um, preparing this number and where it comes from. These numbers here are your uh, December year-end cash balances for each of these funds. These are your funds that actually receive interest. This is the total of all your funds. And then this would calculate the percentage that the general fund is getting in interest. So from your statement of activities, this, this number here, the 16,596, is what the entity received the entire year in interest. Here's the general funds portion, the 2,000, and then the remaining portion is what goes into the note. So if you click here, this will go right back to the note where I was uh, highlighting this. I'm gonna have to rotate the page again. 
and you can see here's the $14,000 that's interest assigned from other funds. Other ACBOA differences and requirements, uh, we talk about inventory and prepaids in this note, uh, whether capital assets are recorded, accumulated leaves such as sick leave and vacation. We talk also about cost sharing plans, your pension plans, your long-term debt if you have any, and also other things that could be included in here are uh, interfund transactions and then talks about net position and fund balance. Uh, as Justin said earlier, you'll really want to follow the notes shell from our website and read the yellow and green highlights to guide you along. Also, your prior year audit report will be a great help. This uh, note will not significantly change year to year unless you choose to change something that you're reporting. All right. Justin? Okay. So we are going to jump back into note three. If I can find it here for just a second. Okay, note three is your compliance note. You may not have anything, but this is where you would list any budgetary violations that your entity had during the year. You would list that by fund. Some examples would be if you had expenditures plus encumbrances that exceeded appropriations, you would disclose that here. Or if by chance you had appropriations that exceeded estimated resources plus carryover balance, go ahead and list that here as well or you can list any funds that had a deficit cash balance at year end. Now later on when your audit staff comes in, they may add their own non-compliance issues that they may find throughout the course of their project, but that it, note three is where you would want to disclose that. Okay. Next up we have note four, budgetary activity. Regulatory notes have charts, uh, budget, budgeted versus actual activity by fund type for both receipt and expenditure. Make sure, make sure you use your budgeted amounts from your most recent amended certificate of estimated resources and appropriations for the year being reported. Uh, the actual amounts should match your financial statements. Just walk you through how to find this information. Here's the note right here. So if you are going to jump to 73, here is your certificate of estimated resources. You would use this, these middle two columns right here to come up with your estimated resources, your taxes and your other sources. Uh, the total of these two will tie to what we have presented in our sample here for note four. The next portion of that is going to be your appropriations resolution. And if we find your, um, depending on uh, the detailed level that you appropriate, since this is uh, quite lengthy, we obviously didn't include all the pages here, but here's a summary of the following pages and this total uh, right here. The first appropriations ordinance right here. And then throughout the year, you may have supplemental appropriations. The total of your original uh, plus your supplementals, whatever your final total is, plus any carryover encumbrances, that is your appropriations authority in note four. And this number here, these two numbers will tie to what we presented in our sample. So we'll just go back to note 23. So, and as we mentioned, your actual numbers will come from your financial statements. And 
Michelle has some Akbo information for you. This node is quite a bit different for Akboa filers. I'm going to jump down to page 54 of the handout to show you a table that's required. At the top of the table, there's a paragraph that talks about where the information is coming from. It's coming from the statement of receipts, disbursements, and changes in fund balance for your general fund and your major special revenue funds. The differences normally will be your year-end encumbrances and your unreported interest. And what I mean by differences, this table lists out your modified, on a modified cash basis, the first line, this is your change in cash here. Then at the bottom is your change in cash on a budgetary basis. So the only differences between those normally will be any unreported cash that you've pulled on because this is a modified cash basis for ACBOA and your encumbrances. There is a detailed worksheet, but it pretty much is the same as this, but it's in Excel, and you could click on page 87 to see that, but it's going to look pretty much just like this. So those are the requirements for your budgetary note for ACBOA. You'll bear with me for just a second when we get back up here to note number five. Note five is your deposits and investment notes. Uh, the regulatory notes have a chart that lists all the cash and investments by account type. All accounts of one type are added together, so you don't have to list out each bank or account separately. You'll just combine those all and present them on one line item. So as you see here, you have your demand deposits. Uh, this would be any and all bank accounts that you may have. Uh, here we have Star Plus. If your entity invested in Star Plus, you would list the balance at year end there. Uh, if your entity invested in Star Ohio, you would also list that disclosure there. Um, we'll go to page 93 for some examples. Here we have a sample bank statement. Everyone is familiar with what a bank statement looks like, so you would you would add up the totals of all of your ending bank balances and this would be the amount that you presented on that line item for depository balances. Here is your Star Ohio sample. Uh, if you had an ending balance with Star Ohio, this is the number that you would present in that note for that balance. Uh, this is where Michelle can jump in and give you some ACBOA disclosure information. The cash note for ACBOA starts off with listing the legal investments and deposit types that townships and villages can have. That's a little lengthy. And then it goes in to talk about what the township has insured and what they have covered under FDIC. There's a uh, worksheet on page 103. Zoom in on this a little bit. This worksheet will just list out all your bank accounts by bank and your balances at 1231 and you'll pull out the amounts that are covered by FDIC. FDIC is covered up to $250,000 per bank per type. And what I mean is if you have three accounts at Fifth Third and one's demand and one's time, you'll have $250,000 in coverage for the time and $250,000 in coverage for the demand. 
So if, uh, say, this account right here, this plus account, was a demand, because I'm assuming this is a, is a time, if this is a demand, there would be an additional 250 here. Star plus is covered by FDIC fully. So in this example, this is the amount of FDIC covered for all of the deposits with this township. So this is the uninsured amount, $9.7 million. This doesn't mean this is a bad thing. This is just what you need to disclose in your notes. And if we go back up to the sample, you'll see that number that they've included. And I've missed it. Let me get up there. Actually, I passed it. right here so there's the disclosure of the amounts that are not covered by FDIC now Justin will go into the next note which is the property tax note Okay, note six is the property tax note. Uh, the regulatory notes, if you don't have any public utility taxpayers, then you can go ahead and delete the second paragraph here. You don't need to disclose that. Um, a lot of this is just sample disclosure. It won't change very much from year to year, so you just follow the suggestions and the highlighted information in our sample notes, and they will guide you along into filling this out as appropriately as possible for your entity. Now there is some changes as always for ACBOA and I will yield to Michelle. I'm going to flip to page 56 that will show you additional requirements for ACBOA filers. You will need to disclose the property tax rate and the assessed values upon which those property taxes were assessed. That information can be obtained from the county auditor if the auditor has not already provided that information to you throughout the year. So you just need to put that in a nice little table format. Go back up to page 24. Um. In note six also, if your entity had any income taxes, this is where you would include that disclosure. Um, if you do not have municipal income tax, obviously then you would not need to disclose anything in that note. Um, what you would like to do is describe what the income tax is, what kind of income is taxed, what is the tax percentage. A good resource for this is look at your most recent income tax ordinance or the ballot language if the tax was approved by the voters. Also, if a portion of the tax is required to be used for a specific purpose, this is also where you would disclose what that specific purpose was. Moving on to note number seven, Michelle will fill you in on that. This note is not really a requirement for regulatory filers. It is for ACBOA filers. And you will just basically describe any transfers made during the year. You can present that in a table format, transfers in, transfers out. Or if, the, if only a few transfers occurred during the year, you can simply put it in a sentence form. Now, if you are a regulatory filer and you had any material outstanding advances that were not repaid at the end of the year, you would include that disclosure. And that disclosure would include the purpose of what the advance was for, and you would include that here in note number seven. For ACBOA filers, you will need to disclose any advances made as opposed to regulatory where they are disclosing material, you will disclose for ACBOA any advances made and, and not repaid at year end 
You can also, just like the transfers, you can put that in a table format, or you can, if there's just a few advances not repaid during the year, uh, you can put that in sentence form also. You will also need to describe the purposes of all the advances. Moving on, note eight is your risk management note. For regulatory filers, uh, you're going to want to list the type of insurance, uh, only include the type that your entity has. If you are a participating uh, member of a risk pool for insurance, go ahead and use and update that section with the name of the pool and what it covers. If by chance you are an entity that is self-insured for a type of insurance, uh, go ahead and use that section as well and update for your specific entity. Here we have some examples. Uh, the sample discloses uh, the workers' compensation coverage. Uh, this township appears to be a member of Otarma for the sample disclosure. This sample disclosure can be obtained from the Auditor of State's office, and in just a minute we will show you how to find it. Uh, here is some more coverage in terms of casualty and property coverage. Uh, let's just go ahead and let's go to page 111 real quick and we'll see. And this is a sample from the Ohio Township Association's Risk Management Authority, OTARMA. Uh, this is from their most recent audit report and this is where you can obtain uh, some of the information that you will need for the note disclosure. This information may not be available for 2016 so you may need to report one year in a lag report the most recent available information in the event that the audit report is not out and you cannot obtain this information yourself and here is just some more sample disclosure from the otarma report uh, and we will show you how to get to some specialized footnote disclosure here in just a minute, but I will let Michelle elaborate further on some information. For ACBOA filers, you'll want to list some additional information, including the amounts of coverages and deductibles. You can put that in a table format. They just want a more detailed listing of the types and amounts of coverages that you have. Uh, here, the screen will show you an example of a risk management note for this township. Okay, and we're going to show you real quick how to find that sample disclosure that I was just talking about. If you go to the Auditor of State's website, underneath the where we showed you how to find your financial statement note samples, down here at the bottom, you see other specialized footnote disclosures, and this is where you can find almost any specific specialized footnote disclosure that you may need for your entity. And here is the Otarma sample. So this is what you would use for your note disclosure. And that information can be found, as I said, on the Auditor of State's website under other specialized footnote disclosure. And we are going to move on to note nine. which is your defined benefit pension plan note. And I will allow, well, a little background on this note. Uh, this is where you're going to want to disclose any retirement system that your employees may participate in. For townships and villages, you would expect to see Ohio Public Employment Retirement System or perhaps Ohio Police and Fire Pension Fund. If by chance you have any employees who contribute to Social Security, you would also want to include the disclosure for Social Security as well. For ACBOA filers, uh, this pension note is a, a lot more involved. 
under the new GASB 68 requirements. We have sample notes already established. It goes into the detail of the different groups. If, if your township or village does not have all these employee types, you can hide this information. You just you can this is a PDF document but within our word document this is actually a table you click inside the table and you can hide some of these uh, rows that do not apply to your entity the only calculation that you will have to make for this note are the contractually required contributions for each year so you will disclose for 2016 all our examples here are for 2015, but for 2016, you will use this worksheet on page 120, so we'll click the link for that. And this table just kind of shows you how to walk you through the percentages that you have to disclose in the note. You will get your covered payroll. If you do not have police and fire, you, you will just leave those uh, areas blank. So here's your PERS. Uh, here are the percentages and then it calculates based upon your payroll the amount that you'll disclose in your note. So if you have police and fire you will do the same calculations and have the same note disclosure just for that pension group. So here's the Ohio police and fire disclosure and here's where you will fill in the information of your contractually required contributions. And from there we will move back to note number 10, which is your post-employment benefits note. Now for your post-employment benefits note, you're going to include the retirement systems that your employees participate in, um, whether it be the Ohio Police and Fire Pension Fund or Ohio Public Employees Retirement System. This is the note disclosure that you would include. This is something that you can just follow through. The sample will be updated on our website each year to account for any changes in contribution percentages from year to year. So just be sure to check our website each year for updated sample disclosure. For ACBOA, I'm going to skip down to page 63 for the post-employment requirements. The sample will already be prepared for you, so you'll just want to copy and paste that from our website. And what you will need to update is right here. Um, it, you'll need to disclose the portion of pension contributions that were applicable to the health care benefits. And again, you'll use the same worksheet that I showed you previously on page 120. It will already calculate these amounts for you at the bottom. And you can just get the numbers from the prior years from your prior audits. So you'll calculate this number for 2016, and then the numbers from the prior audits will be pulled into your current year. You'll need to do that for, of course, PRS, and if you have Ohio Police and Fire also. And we are now going to move on to note 11, which is your debt note. Allow me to find it real quick. For note 11 and the debt, you're going to describe the various debt obligations that your entity has. Uh, go ahead and include bonds, notes, loans, any leases that you may have. For regulatory filing, in the first chart, you're going to want to include the amount of each debt outstanding at December 31st of the calendar year and the interest rate. So as you can see here in the sample, we have Locust Lake loan 
Uh, we have the principal outstanding at December 31st, and here you have the interest rate. And you would do this for all debt obligations of your entity. For ACBOA filers, the chart, uh, the table for long-term debt is a little bit uh, more expansive. On page 65, we'll show you this township's debt note. They have um, listed here their loans, and these are some general long-term loans, and then these are other loans like leases and just, um, th this could be local bank loans. What you want to do is list out the prior year's balance, what was issued during the year, what was retired during the year, and that will give you your year-end balance. And then in this column, this will be what's due in one year, which represents your principal payments that you will be making in the following year. For regulatory and OCBOA, you will need to list out your annual future debt service requirements for each debt type. So here is an example of the two loans that are long-term in nature. Here are the principal and interest listed out. In this example, all the years are just listed for simplicity. However, if you have a, no, a, a long-term debt instrument that is going to be amortized over 30 years, you will have five years listed all by itself. So you'll have five years listed here, and then you'll have groups of years and five listed together. You will do the same thing for your capital leases. You'll list out your principal and interest, and you'll do it also in five-year increments. This one, this example just happens to end at 2019. But if there were longer requirements, they would be grouped in years of five. Note 12 is your construction and contractual commitments note. This is where you would list any significant construction or other contractual commitments that your entity may have. Um, an example would be if the township had $81,000 per se outstanding in contractual commitments related to the construction of a new fire station, perhaps. You would disclose that in this situation here. The only difference with OCBOA would be that you need to actually list out your encumbrances in a table-like format. Um, we can show you an example on page 67. No, oh, I don't, oh, I can't read my own writing. It's actually page 69. So here are the year-end encumbrances just uh, summarized in a table format. And again, if you happen to have any contractual commitments for, um, let's give an example, the township is constructing a salt shed and it's a significant commitment of the township and say it's for $100,000 and during the year you have paid $20,000 towards it you will want to list out in a table format that the obligation was 100000 you've paid 20000 and you have 80000 remaining to be paid. So you will have two segments in this note. You'll have your encumbrances here, and then below it you can talk about your contractual commitments, and then this example would be for the salt shed. We are going to move on now to note 13. Note 13 is your contingent liabilities notes. 
these are any items that could impact your entity's financial position in the future. Some examples could be if your entity is involved in a lawsuit or if perhaps you have grants that are subject to audit. Uh, we suggest you check with your village solicitor, your township's legal counsel, have them write a letter indicating whether they believe you are involved in any legal issues that could impact your entity's financial position and just go ahead and disclose that here in the contingent liabilities note and you can see the sample disclosure uh, for this particular entity moving on notes 14 through 17 uh, these are notes that relate to organizations that your entity may be involved with each organization will need to be analyzed to see if it fits the definition of one of the types in these notes, 14 through 17, for example. The definition of each type is listed in our shell. That will give you an idea. It'll help you get started. One of the good places to start is if you look at a prior year audits report to see what was listed, you could start there and use those as a guide. You can also look at the audit reports of other entities in your area, perhaps a larger city or a county or a school district. Uh, these reports may include some of the organizations that your entity is involved with. You may be just not familiar with it or it has just slipped through your brain for the time being and this is, could be a good reminder for you to update that note accordingly. So as you can see here in the sample, we have some joint ventures, some jointly governed organizations. As always, if none of this pertains to your entity, just go ahead and delete that from the disclosure and renumber the report accordingly. Uh, here in the sample, note 16, we have a public entity risk pool. As we mentioned earlier, if your township was a member of the Ohio Township Association Risk Management Authority, OTARMA, you would disclose that here. Uh, it appears this entity is also a member of the Center for Local Government Benefits pool. Any sort of public entity pool is where you would disclose that here. And here is just sample disclosure. As we mentioned, you can find sample disclosure on our website. This should be included as sample disclosure for some of your entities, audit reports, any, any resource you have would be a good place to look for this information. Moving on to note 18, that is your related party transaction note. Uh, go ahead and list any transactions that meet the definition listed in the shell. Uh, this would be anything that's opposite of an arm's length transaction. Uh, there are a couple examples in the shell, but if you're not sure if your situation applies, go ahead and count, count, consult with your legal counsel or your solicitor, or you can always call LGS or ask your auditors and they should be able to provide you some guidance in terms of related party transactions. Note 19 in this example uh, is only for ACBOA filers. I'm going to skip to that presentation. It's on page 69. There's general information at the top and this table just summarizes in more detail the balances from your statement of net position. Here you have the amounts that are restricted for certain uh, things like public works, health, public safety, what, what amounts are committed for public works or whatever fits your entity. Um, assigned to could be for what you have year end in your purchase, purchase orders and then this is your general fund unassigned. These, these will tie directly to your financial statements. If you're having trouble coming up with some descriptions or knowing how to categorize your fund balances, you can consult Auditor of State Bulletin 2011-004. There's also a worksheet 
on page 153 and you can it's beyond the scope of this uh, webinar to be able to follow but if you click on on that you will see how each individual fund for this township ties back to each one of these numbers in this chart so this chart is listing out the general fund and all your major special revenue funds and then all of your other funds are combined in this column to get your totals and then these totals here tie back to your financial statements we are going to move on now to note 20 Note 20 is your subsequent event disclosure. This is where you would describe any significant financial events that have happened after your fiscal year end. Um, some examples would be issuance of debt, any new levy or major revenue source, or if you have any major expenditures that you know will take place after year end. Keep in mind, you have to have your report into the Hinkle system within 60 days so you may not have a substantial amount of subsequent events to disclose or even be aware of at this time but in the event that you did this is where you would disclose that information moving on to note 21 in our sample this is the AMP Ohio revenue coverage uh, for villages this note will only apply if you are a member of the Ohio Municipal Electric Generation Agency joint venture uh, otherwise, you would not need this disclosure. If you are a township entity, you will not need this disclosure, so you can just go ahead and remove it from the disclosure and renumber the report accordingly. The next note is um, something that could be added for OCBOA filers. We actually have a slide on this, but it doesn't really tell us too much. But this note would be included if you have a change uh, from reporting, if you decide in your year of reporting that you will report under OCBOA as opposed to the regulatory basis, so you will have a note. We have one included in our samples. So you'll need to include this note if you switch from regulatory to the OCBOA, OCBOA basis of reporting. Note 23 and any beyond are other things that can be included in your notes if you're reporting your capital assets and if you happen to have a component unit that is related to your entity. Justin will now go over uh, the requirements of the actual Hinkle system. Everyone is required to use the Hinkle system to file their financial statements annually. If you are a UAN entity, uh, filing will be part of your year-end closing process. Also, as Michelle mentioned earlier, if you are a UAN user and by chance you are watching this training before the UAN year-end closeout training, we would recommend that you make an effort to attend that training. Uh, the information will also be a part of the closeout checklist. For non-UAN users, a link just for your entity will be emailed to the address on our office file and you must click on that link to file. That link is entity specific and it is year specific. So you won't be able to use that link going forward. That is, the link you will be provided will only be for your 2016 report. In the future, you will be provided an entirely new link for your entity's new year. A full copy of your annual report, including the required financial statements and notes, must be uploaded as one PDF file to meet your filing requirement in the Hinkle system. Now we are going to show you on the Auditor of State's website how to find the Hinkle system. Uh, here is where you can find some frequently asked questions. You'll go to local government and click on annual financial reporting and about halfway down the page you will find the Hinkle annual financial data reporting system section. 
this web page also has some quick guides. These will document and give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to use the Hinkle system, including screenshots for each step. So we'll scroll down here, and here we'll take a look at the quick guides for a township. So this, when you click on your link, your entity-specific link, it will take you to a page that looks like this. And as we mentioned, the quick guides are a page-by-page -page breakdown of what you would expect to see. Here's your begin filing. This is where you would select the reporting style, whether you are regu regulatory or OCBOA. You can also use this link here to get to the frequently asked questions portion of the Hinkle website. Uh, this could be very useful to you in the event that you had a question. So we'll go back to the quick guides here. And this is where you will, this is a sample of what it will look like when you begin filing. Say warning that once you have selected this, you will not be able to reset. Up in the corner of your Hinkle page, you will see a due date. Uh, this due date is 60 days from year end for your filing. Any question marks that you see, uh, they can be used for help on the page. It'll give you a little breakdown of what is expected for that particular line item or for that particular page. So just browse through the quick guides at your own leisure to get more familiar with the Hinkle system. This is where you would finalize. This is where you will enter your name, your title, and your email address, and this will complete the process. Uh, the most important part of this is that you need to upload this information in a PDF file. Uh, the most common software that we can recommend to use if you don't have Adobe Acrobat. We also, there are free programs that you can use uh, listed here on this slide and you can use them at your leisure if you do not have access to Adobe Acrobat. Uh, the easiest way to do this would be to, I'll just give you an example here. What we would typically do is you would file, print, and then you would select Adobe PDF. And then you would want to save this file in a folder that is easily accessible and give it an, a specific name for your specific year, uh, notes 2016, financial statements 2016. Combine those two files into one PDF and you would upload that into the Hinkle system. Um, each software may work slightly differently, but typically what the best route to do is go with what I just showed you, the print, and that will create a PDF file. Once you have all your pieces of PDF, like I said, go ahead and combine those into one file for uploading purposes. Every software may work differently, but it should be relatively simple to combine those files into one PDF file. Now, one other route you could go is you could print each page of your report, scan it in, and save that scanned document as a PDF if you have a copier or a scanner with that capability. You can upload that scanned document into the Hinkle system to meet your filing requirement. The last part of the webinar that we need to address is something for OCBOA filers. It's commonly referred to as the MDNA. It's the Management Discussion and Analysis. Those choosing to do OCBOA should and is strongly encouraged to include the MDNA in your financial statements, but you are not required to do so. The MDNA is a document that goes at the front of the report 
and gives an overall view of the village or township's financial picture for the year, whether it be good or bad. You can talk about anything that you want to highlight and focus on in your MDNA. It includes tables and narratives. The tables compare the current year to the prior year information and the narratives describe any significant changes from year to year. The MDNA is unaudited, however, your auditors will read it and they can offer suggestions for changes. This is just to make sure that what you're talking about in the MDNA and highlighting does not contradict what is actually happening and being reflected in the notes and in the financial statements. At the end of the MDNA is a section called uh, currently known facts or uh, current issues. It's, it's a section where the fiscal officer can talk about uh, things impacting their entity, but it has to be based upon currently known facts. It can't include things that may or may not happen. So you have a lot of leeway, however, it has to be something that is actually known that you want to focus on. This concludes our webinar. Please do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, this screen shows uh, the number where Justin and I could be reached. If you call this 800 number, this is the local government services phone number. You can ask for our location and a message will be sent to us and we will get back with you. You could all also email this email address and the email will be distributed to a representative of local government services in your geographical area. So your response may or may not be from Justin or, or me. Uh, this is also a telephone number for the central office in Columbus, but I would encourage you to call uh, local government services for any questions you have on the webinar or any general questions you have on preparing your notes to the financial statements. Thank you for your attention and do not hesitate to reach out for help.